Hey, welcome back to the channel. So I've got another automotive experiment that we're gonna try it on the buggy here. I'm gonna try and turn the radiator into a dual pass radiator. So the this is not the factory radiator. It's, it's kind of, it's a replacement, it's a champion. But uh, water comes in here, flows through and out here and back into the engine. Uh, it works great. Uh, if it's about 75 degrees outside, uh, the buggy never gets above 210. Uh, I can run 75 miles an hour down the highway with no issues. Once the temperatures start to go up, the temperature gauge starts to go up. It holds steady. It doesn't, uh, it's not like it runs away and overheats. It just, as, as the temperature rises, so does the temperature of the buggy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is convert that radiator into a dual pass and see if I can get a little bit better cooling out of it. Now, with a radiator set up like this, it uh, this is more the style that uh, you would want to convert into a triple pass, but given the, the low height here, I think that's just going to put too much pressure on the system. So what I mean by that is when the, when the water comes in here and out here, this is, this is one pass. If you were to go to a triple pass, you'd put a, a blocker here and a blocker here so the water would come across down, across, down, and out. Well, to convert it into a dual pass, you really need to have your intake and exit on the same side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the filler neck here, cut off this inlet right here, and swap the ends. That way, all I gotta do is put a block off right here, and then I got my dual pass. It's gonna come in right here where the new neck is, across, and it'll come down and out here. Now, to do this, I've gotta also get rid of the transmission cooler. Now, I've, I use an external transmission cooler, so I'm not gonna need it, but you can see in here, there's that big pipe right here where the, the transmission fluid comes in, circles through and comes out. That's how, if you ever wondered, that's how it, how it works. It's not actually running through your fins here, it's just running through this pipe. Uh, so it's gonna be fun to try and figure out how to do that. I'm probably gonna to have to cut off uh, like the bottom here and then drill out uh, this and this, and then maybe it'll slide out the bottom. Hopefully it slides out the bottom. Uh, this is, like I said, this is gonna be experiment. This is a spare radiator. If it doesn't work, then oh well. I don't wanna tear up the, I've got a Mishimoto radiator in there right now and I really don't wanna tear that one up. This one's a lot cheaper to, to experiment on. Uh, Another thing that I'm going to do is add an extra drain. So this little petcock here is, I guess, in the factory location. But the problem is, in the buggy, we'll come over here. So the drain in that factory location is way back there in the back, and it's under a bunch of stuff. It's hard to get to. Uh, crawl up under here. You can see it's basically on the other side of that... Uh, on the other side of the overflow tank, so it's it's real hard to get your hand in there to drain the radiator if you ever need to. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put it on facing out. So I ordered an aluminum bung with an MPT thread on it and then a plug that's the, the same thread. And what I'm going to do is weld it in on this front base here. So the part of the radiator that sticks out, I can have it, uh, have it right here, or more than likely what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the front on this uh, this end, which is at the at the front of the vehicle, put the put the bung right there. That way, it's gonna be nice and easy to get to. Uh, we'll come over here. I'll show you again where the new place is gonna be. So the new bung is gonna be right here. Now this is the Mishimoto radiator, so the tank's shaped a little bit differently. But that that Champion radiator, the tank is uh, it's square cut. So what I'm gonna do is put the bung like right here, close to the outside. That way, whenever I need to drain it, it's right there. It's really easy to get to. Uh, should make, if I ever have to drain this, a whole lot easier uh, than fiddling, trying to get my hand behind the behind the side of the radiator. Because the other downfall of having that on the side there is that whenever you do drain it, all the coolant runs down the frame rail and it's real hard to catch it in a bucket. So you gotta have three or four different buckets and I got a big uh, sheet metal pan that I stick under there so that the coolant doesn't run run out on the in the driveway or anything. All right, so that long explanation out of the way, let's get to modifying on the radiator. So the first thing we're going to do is pull off uh, 
these hoses here that I had where I just looped the I looped the transmission cooler. Uh, get those off of there, and I'm gonna try and drill these out. Maybe use a hole saw or something, and probably cut out this bottom piece here on the bandsaw so that I can uh, take these and slide them out. With that, once that's done, we'll move on to the next thing, which is gonna be cutting the little slice in the side to put the blocker in, and then we'll get to swapping over the filler neck and the inlet neck. All right, so I got the hose pulled out. We're gonna take this hole saw here. It's an inch and three eighths. You can see it'll go down here and fit right over those welds. I'll put it up, I'll put it in the drill press and, and drill these out. All right, there we go. That one drilled out and that one drilled out. Now to uh, cut the bottom of this thing so I can slide that out of there. I get this thing cut. I'll peel it back. It's kind of hot. And uh, let's reach in here. Pull that transmission cooler out. That's all the transmission cooler is. So you've got uh, the water flows through a tube right there, and that's got a mesh inside of there. You can't see because it it's full of full of shavings, but it it flows out of there. That's how you're. That's how your transmission gets cool. So I'm gonna make a cut right here, and then I'll make the little uh, make the little piece that's gonna be the block off. And since I have this right here cut out, I can use this as my uh, as my template, so I can make sure I get it all the way up here. I can't weld it to the core right there, but I can at least get it as close as possible. Okay, so I've got the uh, got that pulled out, and I went ahead and I. I filed on some of these. They've still got a little bit more cleanup work to do. But one thing you want to make sure that you do is that as you get in here with a file, if you hit any of these tubes right here, you want to get you a pick like this right here and go in and open those back up. Because you don't want any of those to get pinched off. All right, so this is where I'm going to put the cut line. It's going to be right above uh, where the little, where the boss is thread in the temperature sensor. Uh, it's going to give me... Uh, 12 fins on this side of the of the block off and 13 fins on this side of the block off so uh, that's as close to center as you can get on here just because of the the number of fins you if you wanted it right in the middle you'd have to be blocking this row so I'll just since the sensors right here I'm gonna go with the more rows on the bottom well here we go I got everything cut uh, this is trimmed and then I got the hole for the the new bung new drain hole Right there, here's the uh, pieces, that's the block off plate, and then the two covers for the uh, hole where I cut out the transmission cooler. We got the uh, inlet, we got the fill neck, and these are the little bungs with a uh, screw and plug. And these are, it's an aluminum bung obviously, and then a aluminum uh, set screw both uh, 3 8 in PT. Let everything, uh, like I said, I hosed everything off. Uh, I'll just let it dry out and then I'll get to, get to welding it up. Okay, well I've got the radiator all welded up. I didn't get that on video uh, just because I'm not that good of a welder when it comes to aluminum. Uh, so I didn't want to, you guys probably don't want to watch me struggle with it. But we got everything welded up. You can see I got this neck, filler neck swapped over to this side. Uh, I did as you can see, it's off by a couple degrees, but oh well. Uh, nothing else is welded over here, but over here, so we got the uh, got this uh, 
block off put on this block off put on uh the other um the little diverter is welded in here this uh filler is moved over and then i got this boss welded on uh for the uh new drain plug now what i'm gonna do is i need to pressure test this uh so what i'm gonna do to pressure test it is i'm gonna take this old radiator hose that uh it's got an end that fits here and another end that fits there so i'm gonna mount it up on there i'm gonna fill it with water from the rate from the filler neck and then i'm gonna uh take where that new uh new new drain plug is gonna be i've got uh, some adapters so i can put a straighter valve there and i'm gonna pump it up until the water squirts out of the the vent once it squirts out of the vent i'll know with a 19 pound cap it's got 19 psi in there uh so if that works i'm gonna uh tomorrow try to pick up a higher pressure cap so because i want to test it to something higher than what it's actually going to be run at uh, so i can make sure there's no leaks if i do get some leaks then i'll repair it and then still pick up the the higher pressure cap tomorrow but for tonight we're gonna be testing it at 19 psi all right here's the setup for how i'm going to pressurize this uh so this is a 3 8 uh mpt bung so i've got some adapters i wasn't able to find a 3 8 to 1 8 mpt there out of that at home depot so i've got a 3 8 to quarter a quarter to 1 8 and then i got this uh straighter valve i think this is supposed to be for like an ice maker or something but uh it's got a 1 8 mpt thread on it so i'll fill it up with uh we'll fill it up with some water at the hose and get a bike pump and pressurize this and see what happens all right here's the setup got the bike pump on there uh set up over there we'll watch for water to come out there and i'll watch for leaks everywhere so i'll set the camera up oh. there might be i may have found one already let's see hopefully that's just a drip that was there So you saw it coming out of there. We've got one leak right here. Let's see if there's anything else. All right, so this is why it's important to check for leaks. I found three of them, and neither of them were in a spot that I thought it was going to be. So there's one right there, one right here, and one over here. Oh, I guess maybe I thought there'd be one over here. But I thought there'd be one over on the filler neck, but there's not. So go ahead and let all the let the pressure out of here. Oh, there may be one on the shredder valve that I missed. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and check that one out just to make sure, and then we'll get this thing drained so that I can uh, repair the leaks that I found. Okay, so I've got the the modified radiator put back in the buggy. Uh, I'll quickly go over uh, the new routing of the hoses and what everything looks like now. Uh, so. You can see that uh, my inlet and my outlet are on the same side of the radiator now, kind of as I showed when it was out of the vehicle. i uh, got the filler right here, a uh, couple of hoses, you know, a 90 here and about a 45 here. This is, uh, again, kind of like how I had it routed uh, with the old setup. This is basically just a factory hose from a Cherokee that I've cut down uh, so that I can get the, get the bend here. Uh, and again, the filler, you know, it's back there in the in the back now a little bit harder to get to but uh you can still um pull the cap off and fill through here uh the uh rest of it here so i've got some some paneling up here on the top so that any air that comes into the side i've also got these fins here it's all pushed kind of into the radiator instead of up and around and into the engine compartment i've done some driving with and without this and there's probably a uh, I mean, there's a very small difference in the, on the temp gauge. Uh, again, I don't know what the actual numbers are, but you can see a difference on the gauge with with and without that paneling. Uh, this is the new uh, the new drain that I put in. Uh, as you remember, the other one is on the back of the radiator, behind that fin, behind the overflow tank that's behind that panel back there, and it's just really hard to get to. So this one's going to make it nice and easy. I can get to this right here and uh, put a hose on it and let it let it drip down. Um, 
I'll go ahead and cut to some video uh, and I'll put a little mark on the screen. Again, I, I don't have the video of the temperature that it ran before all these modifications, but I'll put a little tick mark on the screen kind of showing where the, where the temp gauge was in similar conditions. And again, uh, kind of my reference is, you know, about 95 degree weather at 70 miles an hour on the highway. Uh, it's, uh, you'll see on, on the clip that it's running right around 210, which is really good. Uh, before all this, it probably ran about 230 or so, which was in between the 210 mark and the tick mark before 260. Uh, so I think, uh, I think this overall is going to be an improvement, but we'll cut to that video real quick and just show you, uh, what it looks like. have it uh 95 degree temperature 70 75 miles an hour at three over 3,000 rpms on the highway and it's running steady at 210 uh that's really good that's way better than what it ran uh previously uh, again the temperature never ran away previously but it did did get a little warm uh if i run this in cooler temperatures like uh, maybe 75 degree weather or run it early in the morning it doesn't even get that hot on the highway uh so i'm gonna call this a success Again, this isn't something that you can probably do to a regular Cherokee, but it would work on other vehicles that you're building, other, other vehicles that you're building, other custom vehicles, uh, where you could convert your radiator maybe to a single pass or to a dual pass or a triple pass. Uh, again, I didn't do a triple pass here because the radiator is kind of short, and I didn't trust that there was going to be enough. Uh, there wasn't going to be too much restriction uh, with the small row count that I was going to have, but. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you want to see some more content. Thanks.